There was no scientific evidence of a planet outside of our solar system until around 30 years ago. Hello and welcome to Z, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thanks to scientific research and technological advancements, humanity have identified approximately 5,300 exoplanets or alien worlds that remain undiscovered and only waiting to be explored. Large gas giants were the focus of most of these discoveries at first, but as technology has advanced, smaller, Earth-like exoplanets have begun to be found. More than 50 exoplanets with masses comparable to Earth and more than 800 worlds with radii less than 1.5 times that of Earth have already been discovered by scientists. There aren't many planets like this that are known to be circling their parent stars in the habitable zone, which is where the conditions are ideal for life to exist. However, that is beginning to alter already. We're starting to find complete planetary systems with multiple potentially livable worlds as we hunt for habitable planets. Furthermore, at least one such system in our cosmic neighborhood is already known to us. There are many compact systems in our Milky Way galaxy that are centered around stars like the Sun. Nevertheless, planets that are in tight orbit around these stars are typically too hot to support life. However, the habitable zone is significantly closer to stars that are fainter and cooler. This is Gliese 667, GJ 667, a triple star system roughly 23 light years from Earth in the Scorpius constellation. It has the first known instance of numerous possibly habitable rocky planets orbiting a low mass star within its Goldilocks zone. The system has three stars, just as Alpha Centauri. The largest main sequence star in the system is GJ 667A, a K type star. This orange-red dwarf is only approximately 12% as bright as the Sun, with a mass of 73%, radius of 76%, and visual brightness of only 12%. Approximately 12.5 astronomical units away is its companion, GJ667b. In addition, it is a K-type orange-red dwarf with a mass of roughly 69% that of the Sun and a visual brightness of only 5% that of our star. The third star is also the most fascinating, similar to Alpha Centauri. With a mass and radius of just 33% and 34% of the Sun, respectively, Gliese 667c is an M-type red dwarf. In addition, it is quite cold, its surface temperature is 3,775 Kelvin, while the Sun's is 5,772 Kelvin and extremely faint luminosity, 1.4% X-Sun. However, GJ667C features a very rich planetary system given its modest size. After re-examining previous data and conducting new observations, scientists discovered that there may be six planets in the planetary system, with three or even four of them being potentially habitable super-Earths. Originally, scientists believed that there were only three exoplanets orbiting Gliese 667C. So just what does a super-Earth mean? A planet that is bigger than Earth but not quite as big as gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn is referred to by this name. These planets could consist of rock or a combination of ice and rock and their atmospheres might be able to host a variety of life forms. Gliese 667 CB, the planet nearest to the star, is an intensely hot globe with a temperature of 200 degrees Celsius, 392 degrees Fahrenheit. This exoplanet, which is the most massive in the system at roughly 5.5 times the mass of Earth, most likely has a thick atmosphere and completes a seven-day cycle around its home star. The three planets in the Gliese 667 system that have the potential to be habitable are distant from their host star and have masses that range from one to five times that of Earth, which makes them excellent candidates. The next closest planet, Gliese 667 cc, orbits inside the habitable zone of the star. Its year lasts only 28 Earth days, and its radius is 1.8 times larger than Earth's. Its mass is around 3.8. As the holy grail of extrasolar planets, it has an Earth similarity index of 0.85. The habitable zone surrounding the red dwarf GJ667C is completely contained inside Mercury's orbit and is situated quite close to the star, spanning from 11 cents to 23 cents due to its low energy output. Earth's distance from the Sun is approximately one astronomical unit. At that distance, our planet's orbit around star C would be an ice world. 
Every 28 days, GJ667CC completes an 8 times closer orbit around its parent star, which is located at roughly 12 cents. The exoplanet is most likely tidally bound to the star because to its close proximity with perpetual day and night on opposite sides. Significant temperature variations between the two regions most likely have a significant effect on the exoplanet's overall climate. About 10% less light from the Sun reaches Gliese 667 cc than it does Earth. However, the planet receives almost the same amount of energy from the Sun that our world does since the majority of the light it receives is infrared, which helps keep water on its surface and creates a temperature that is comparable to Earth's. The precise surface temperature of Gliese 667 cc cannot be predicted because astronomers are unsure of the planet's atmosphere's potential thickness. The planet's temperature would be evenly distributed throughout with a comfortable nighttime temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Fahrenheit, if the planet did really have an atmosphere similar to Earth's. The experience of living on such a world would be very different. The star of GJ 667 cc emits a weak reddish glow. The remaining two stars, Gliese 667 a and b, are outside of the planetary system and may be found at a distance of roughly 230 Australian dollars, which is significantly greater than the distance between Pluto and the Sun. The two other suns, however, would still be seen as a pair of dazzling stars during the day and as bright as the full moon at night. And the Sun would seem like a far-off star. Regretfully, flares, or strong radiation bursts, and energetic particles with a power up to a thousand times that of solar flares are known to be released by the nearby Red Dwarf. The planet's proximity to its flaring host star presents a challenge for any possible life that may exist there. This is the case for Gliese 667 cc. In addition, the Red Dwarf's strong magnetism may result in star spots, which might lower the star's energy output by up to 40% for months. This, along with the star's lack of ultraviolet light emissions, would present another challenge to the emergence of life as we know it. Because of its immense size, living on Gliese 667 cc would be quite different from what we are used to. The exoplanet's surface experiences a different gravitational acceleration due to its increased mass. The gravitational acceleration on this rocky world could be as much as 60% greater than what we experience on Earth. On Gliese 667 cc, a person weighing 75 kilograms, 165 pounds, on Earth would weigh 120 kilograms, 265 pounds. Furthermore, a planet with a larger mass may support an atmosphere that is more massive, which raises the atmospheric pressure at the planet's surface. If the exoplanet's atmosphere is like that of Venus, the pressure could be several hundred times higher than Earth's, or the same as the water pressure found several kilometers below the surface of the planet's seas. If the exoplanet has an atmosphere similar to Earth's, the pressure would only be a few times higher. Even if Gliese 667 cc is in a habitable zone, its conditions might not be the same as those on Earth. It's possible that life on Gliese 667 cc will need to adapt to irregular and low light levels, possibly higher pressure, and periodic flares. That doesn't mean, however, that life cannot exist on such a world. On Earth, we've already witnessed instances of amazing life adaptability. The two additional worlds that might be livable are nearly the same. Since Gliese 667 Su and Gliese 667 CF are both farther from their parent star, they receive less energy. Together, they have masses of 2.7 Earths and 1.45 Earths, respectively. They might become too chilly to support life as we know it as a result. However, a thick atmosphere would be advantageous for possible life on these planets since it would trap heat and preserve optimum temperature conditions, unlike with GJ667 cc. It is quite uncommon to find three of these worlds in the same planetary system's habitable zone, but finding four is practically unimaginable. Five planets in the Gliese 667 c system are thought to receive solar radiation ranging from 20 to 100% of Earth's present exposure to the Sun, according to one research, making them all possible contenders for habitability. However, there are other variables at work. Scientists have established that the habitable zone surrounding Gliese 667 c has two borders consistent with a planet of mass equivalent to Earth. 
the distances of the outer and inner boundaries in astronomical units from the star are 0.241 and 0.251 Australian dollars and 0.095 and 0.126 Australian dollars, respectively. Given the conditions for liquid water to exist on its surface, any planet orbiting star C within these ranges may be able to support life. A planet becomes inhospitable if it is too close to its star because of the heat that turns water on the planet into vapor that escapes. This occurs as a result of water vapor's ability to trap heat and raise temperatures to unbearable levels. Water vapor is a greenhouse gas. The only planets more resistant to the wet greenhouse effect are those toward the inner border of the habitable zone and with higher masses. However, a planet runs the risk of being encased in ice if it is too far from its star, like the outermost Gliese 667 g. Gases like CO2 can prevent this from happening by warming the globe, but too much CO2 can actually cool it down by reflecting light away. Therefore, the amount of CO2 that can warm a planet is limited. Astronomers announced in 2013 that Gliese 667 c is known to have at least six planets, and that a seventh planet, known as GJ 667 ch, may exist. With a mass of at least 1.1 times that of Earth and situated between the planets C and B, the exoplanet around star C may be the smallest one discovered to date, although being extremely contentious. The planet H is too hot for life to form due to its mass and closeness to the parent star 0.0893 Australian dollars. However, it is confirmed that planets F and E orbit within the habitable zone. Furthermore, the orbit of planet D is still unknown even if its projected location is outside the outer limit of the habitable zone. This implies that the worlds CC, CF, SU, and probably even CD of Gliese 667 have the capacity to support life. There are many populations of planetary systems out there, each with many potentially habitable planets, as evidenced by the discovery of closely clustered planetary systems orbiting M-dwarf stars like Gliese 667c. Furthermore, the number of such prospective planetary systems in our galaxy is probably far higher than previously believed since M-dwarfs make up more than 70% of all stars in our cosmic vicinity. Scientists can now concentrate on one star to uncover several Earth 2.0 prospects rather than scouring the sky for 10 stars in hopes of finding one potentially habitable planet. The development of new and sophisticated telescopes is accelerating our ability to solve the universe's secrets. Which star system is the next you'd like to learn about? Post your thoughts in the comments section. Make sure to hit the super thank you button if you appreciated the video and stay tuned for updates on the next exciting discovery in space. I appreciate you seeing. In the future, many thanks. And good luck. You.